What does the Our Father prayer teach us about temptation? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. One night in a country in the Far East, a man was overcome by the heat and vowed that he would sleep that night even if he had to move his bed outside into the open air where tigers prowled and cobras crawled. He dragged his bed outside into the courtyard of his home. A pleasant cool breeze descended upon him immediately from the nearby jungle canopy. He spread his mosquito netting above his bed, resting it upon the frame of the bedstead and fell fast asleep. It was not an hour or so later that he was awakened by a feeling of dread and apprehension. He sensed that he was not alone and that danger lurked nearby. He was transfixed by the silence of the night and felt that he dare not move lest he make a noise that would attract the danger that he was sure rested in the nearby jungle. As he stared straining into the darkness beyond, he suddenly saw a shadow He knew immediately that a tiger was prowling the edge of the jungle in search of prey. Frozen in fear, he could barely afford a breath. The shadow moved nearer and nearer to the place where he reclined in the middle of that courtyard. There was no escape nor weapon to be grasped. He simply closed his eyes and waited. Though he could not see the beast for he was afraid to open his eyes lest they reflect his presence, he knew that it was upon him. Closer and closer it came until he could feel it pressing its nose against the fragile netting. Yet each time it pressed against the netting, it retreated only to return again. Finally, after feeling its breath rushing across his frozen face, he could stand it no longer. He arose in bed and screamed with all his life and breath. The tiger retreated to the jungle and he was saved. He never again found himself so bothered by the heat to take the risk of sleeping in that courtyard again. Today's Gospel reading teaches us how to pray and what to pray because oftentimes we know what we want but maybe we do not know what we need. The Our Father is our all-time prayer that teaches us how to prioritize what is important to pray for. Notice that it starts with the pronoun our. It is not just a personal prayer. We pray not only for ourselves but for each other. We begin this prayer that Jesus himself taught us to give praise to God in His name. It brings us to a higher plane of existence where peace abounds. It assures us that there is someone who is all-powerful, who is everywhere, and who is really a father to us, who will never abandon us. And that is very comforting, isn't it? It goes us to surrender to His will and His plan. After our acknowledgement of dependence upon Him, we can now focus on our material and spiritual needs, our daily provisions represented by bread, the forgiveness of our sins, strength when temptation comes, and protection from evil. Notice the phrase, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are two petitions that have the same intention. It indicates how important it is for us to have the faith to withstand the temptation to sin that the devil tries to put on us in many deceptive ways that are oftentimes unnoticeable to us. And we reflect today more on this because it is where perhaps we all struggle and oftentimes fail. Perhaps this is why Jesus said it twice. In the more recent translation of the Our Father, we have this phrase, Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. God is not the source of temptation. It is the devil. And we can succumb to it easily if we do not beware. But God allows us to be tempted as a form of testing, not for Him, but for us. He wants us to realize that because of the free will that He gifted us with, we can only fight the cunning and guile of the devil if we call upon God's help. James points this out. No one experiencing temptation should say, I am being tempted by God, for God is not subject to temptation to evil, and He Himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. One of the areas of temptation we are constantly subjected to is related to the cardinal sin, pride, that leads to unforgiveness. He points out to us that we can only be forgiven if we ourselves forgive those who trespass against us. But we oftentimes have difficulty forgiving because we rely solely on our feelings. We wait until we feel good enough to forgive. 
But in most instances, that bitterness and resentment never fades. There is always a trigger that will bring hurtful memories back. Forgiveness needs to become a decision, willing ourselves to forgive even if we do not feel it. For this to happen, we need to ask for the grace of God. Our journey of forgiveness may be a process, but it starts with the grace to make us willing to forgive. And we begin this journey with the Our Father. Like a mosquito net, simple and fragile but strong, our own innocence and fragility can be reinforced by the Our Father to ward off temptation. The devil will try to break through that defense, breathing down our necks, ready to devour us. But the grace that covers us will protect us. Nonetheless, the breath of the tiger, that is, temptation, allows us to pause and ponder what we ought to do, what we ought to pray for, who we ought to depend on, and indeed, we can rely on our Father. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I pray the Our Father prayer, help me to rely wholly, fully, and entirely on you to ward of temptation and sin in my life. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.